Where's the kids? So hi, welcome to a foreigner in the Philippines. We're sitting outside Jollibee. Uh, we're in the parking lot. Uh, and we're waiting for our kids. We're, we're here with, with four kids today. Uh, there's uh, our usual two, Talek Lake and BB. And, uh, and we also have LJ and Lovely who are who are staying with Nana at the moment to help out. So, uh, what was the, we have a letter to Yeah, answer? so here's another one. Hi Terence and Beth, I am married to a Filipino for five months. At first, the family is really nice. That's why it gives me idea to buy a property next to my wife's property. So we will not be eat, so we will not be away from the family. But then after the marriage, the family's attitude seems sour bad right yeah. and always borrowing money if not able to borrow money shouting their native language and always drunk the brothers and majority are the father is the father so i decided to let to let live and rent in the next town away from them how to resolve my issues now that you have also a filipino family terence now uh, now that you have how to resolve my issues now that you have also Filipino family parents? Please advise me, Ronald. Oh, Ronald, this is not an unfamiliar, uh, it's not an unusual situation. Um, things change once you, once you get married. Uh, maybe it's a little bit a little bit late now because you've obviously you've handled the situation to the degree that it can but now you have a property that's next to your uh, extended what else call your extended family and um, you wish that that property was somewhere close to where you are renting a place so uh, we've heard of this happening before and um, and more severe perhaps than yours where where the fam where the uh, where the husband actually felt th uh, well was threatened so um, I think that you've done what you need to do you have rented a place that you can live what does your wife feel about this that's not I think it's not it's not this? what you call that I think it's um, it's common of some expat, you know, that's why there are others that prefer to be far away from the family. Why? Because it's difficult so that they, were, they, were, they don't have easy access, you know. That's a, I, you know, there are some others that prefer that to have a little far connections, far areas to be with, you know, because they think all the a lot, majority or not majority, but maybe others thinking that they are an ATM, you know. And sometimes the wife will not tell the husband about that the wife give that to them because might be the wife also been uh, also been scared to that she able to loan or give to their family you know so that's one of the that's one of the nightmare of some expat you know but then as you, in your case the family is very nice at the beginning but later on it getting sour so in other words it's the real face is now is the real the real attitude is now show up you know and that's the real attitude that you didn't see when you get when before you get married you know but it's just kind of sad why is it your wife didn't inform you about that you well, know the wife wouldn't actually may not know about that Hi. and the other thing is she's been yeah. the wife has been with the family since birth <clears throat> right okay but she's never been married to where ah, okay. her husband has has money right particular situation she hasn't had, yeah, had experience right, of, right? So maybe she, maybe she thought, wow, this is wonderful. Everybody's very happy, and um, we'll get a place next to the family. I won't lose the family. Um, like you say, she's been with the family all her life. But part of your situation has been created by you. Yeah, maybe at, at the beginning you're very extravagant, like bringing them to restaurant, buying them something, and every time there's some occasions, you always get food to them, you know, so they really thought that you have a lot of money, which is, and you have unlimited money. Maybe that's what you planted at the beginning, which is wrong, 
you know you need to you need to tell that the beginning like look i have money but it's only enough for me and my wife and might be for uh, and also to my future uh, to my future children you know so i can i can borrow i can help once in a while but if you always been there like every time you need something you always been in our door then it cannot it can be like that you know because our money isn't enough for us you know maybe that's why but that's what wrong with you at the beginning okay and that's a lot of talk that that would mean a lot of talk and as we found today a lot of talk doesn't actually get you anywhere and like for instance when we pulled in we had to go and do something so we left the truck now we we had the four kids with us so we said to the four kids here's what you have to do we want you to go and make a fun video about being in the park yeah and we made it very clear here. and we talked about it all of this we got well, interrupted there but <laughs> with kids coming in and banging doors and banging other people's cars in the parking lot but what i think i was uh, up to was saying that part of what is happening right now was as beth said created by you by perhaps being a little too generous from the beginning but what they now have to uh, see is that when they look at your lifestyle they should get you know if what you're saying is is correct they should get the right impression of the fact that you're living modestly unless of course the place that you moved into is a 25,000 pesos a month place on the beach <laughs> so depending on how you're living right now you should be e easily able to explain by demonstration that you're not a rich man yeah and then it's up to you to moderate what you are asked for very often we we often because we are in in our mission is to help that's what we that's what our mission is so we get people who have been referred to us and they arrive at the house at six or seven in the morning and they need they might their request might be for two thousand pesos and we don't have 2,000 pesos here and 2,000 pesos there so the best that we can do is what we can do and if it's only three or four hundred pesos then that's what we give and they have to be satisfied with that and made aware that this is what we can afford to give yeah you know because it's not if you add on that like for example 1,000 there 1,000 over there 2000 over there it will be expenses you know so all you need to do is try to explain to them that that's what that's the difference you know that's the difference and you're not an etm right you're not well, an ETM. i would try try not to use that kind of language beth is using the language that you would use when we're talking about the problem yeah. but when you address the person you know there's no point in saying listen listen i'm not an atm okay um no that's not going to help but telling telling someone look uh, we simply cannot afford that and you probably i'm doubting that you speak the language yeah I so do. you're probably going through your wife uh, for uh, communication anyway so you have to tell your wife look and you got to get this over to these guys that we don't have it and eventually you will get an agreement and an understanding with your wife that when someone comes and they need help they'll be you'll be able to help as much as you can i think that that's the answer yeah so again that's it for now we're, we're completed now just been an hour of waiting it's it makes my hair so curly kids. never mind your hair right now yeah so again have a good day thank you so much and get this bye bye